Welcome to Inform Me, a social media conversation for April 30th, 2014. I'm Nate Manahan. And I'm Dustin Hickel. Hey, today we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about how do you handle controversy, how do you handle things that are controversial that are trending on Facebook and Twitter, and what you should do as a small business. Yeah, we're going to talk about really practical applications for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You got better keep watching, because this is going to be really good stuff. All of this right here on Inform Me, a social media conversation. Keep watching. Welcome back to Informe, and we're going to talk social media. It's a yeah. good week to talk social media. Big news, lots of social media news. Yeah, lots of social media news. Some that seems a little disappointing for small business. Not a lot of small business news, but some really good, useful things we're going to bring it to you. Yeah. Uh, let, let's start with a story that's a little bit social media related, but it's a post you posted yesterday ah, on the okay. Pro Media. All right. So, big story this week has definitely been what's happening with the Los Angeles Clippers, yeah. with their owner, the comments that he made. Um, and you made a comment, you said, should small businesses or businesses yeah. engage in that conversation? Because it was trending all over the place. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we suggest is try to jump in on conversations that are trending and people are, because they're going hit, to hit, click on those ad hashtags on Facebook and Twitter. And, you might get some yeah, more exposure. Yeah, you might get some exposure. But yeah. when it's controversial like that, yeah. and you're a clothing sales from you know, Paducah, Wisconsin. Is it relevant? And it could you, is there a downside to jumping into the conversation and even sharing oh, yeah. a viewpoint? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think we all came out against it. Yeah. I think any of us could say, yes, what he said was wrong. Yep. But then people, I noticed some companies and some brands jumping in farther and saying, and, and then brands pulling their support of the Clippers. What yep. do you, I don't know, what's your take? If you're going to, I'm going to say do it with caution. Be very, very careful what you say um, because it's already controversial enough you don't need a situation on your hands where you're taking a stance against or for the controversial statement and then all of a sudden finding yourself with a ton of backlash. Yeah. You know, this it really has to be well thought out and considered. Um, the big example that I think of is when we had the, when, when the, the shooting at Aurora um, happened, there was a, a clothing company jumped on and said, oh, the hashtag Aurora is trending. It must be about our Aurora style dress. And Instantly, everybody hated those people because they had they were uncensored, or, you know, not being sensitive to the situation, not caring it was all about themselves, and not paying attention to what was actually happening. If you're going to jump onto something like that, make sure you know, one, what the story is actually about, and two, be really thoughtful in what right. you're going to say. Don't make that mistake where it's not about you, it's about people who are dying and, and, and a tragedy that happened in yeah. our country. You know, so make sure uh, you've got to be on your guard on those. You have yeah. to be. Well, it, uh, to me, a litmus test might be, am I trying to sell something or am I just trying to care? And if, sure. I, if I say I'm trying to care, so I'm going to stand up and say, look, what Donald Sterling said was wrong mm -hmm. and no one should say that and there should be consequences for that. And you might say some type of statement or right. in the case of a shooting or a, a catastrophe, our mm -hmm. hearts and our prayers are with those sure. people that are... Absolutely. With. But when you go out and you start trying to jump in and suddenly you're putting a link to selling whatever you sell online or, hey, come get our free Doritos tonight, right. um, that may be something where you jump over and you have to be sensitive to that. Now, right. when you're tweeting versus being your brand, and we talk to this sometimes, tweeting, Facebooking, whatever, as your brand versus doing it as your personal self and your personal perspective. When something like this happens, there's all kinds of controversy. And mm -hmm. I saw people jumping out there. Um, there's a local guy who I follow on Twitter that was you know, saying, I don't understand why this is a big deal. He should have this opportunity to have free speech. We can just not go to his you know, games. Sure. Um, has that viewpoint. But he also represents a local brand mm -hmm. because he works for a local company. And I watched it at that. And he was doing it on his personal account. Mm -hmm. But I knew where he works and I know who he works for. Right. What should we say about that type of topic when those controversial things are happening? Yeah, you know, it's, it's again, use caution and be smart about it. You know, don't make, don't make rash decisions. It's really what it is. Yeah. It's okay to share your personal opinion on things. That's, that's fine. That's, that's exactly what he was saying. You yeah. have free speech to do that. But when you are that closely knit or connected to a brand, um, it, might, it might just be a good idea not to get involved because yeah. you could either damage, you could help your brand, but you could damage your brand just because... If you're, if you're the owner, well, we did that oh, a couple shows ago. We did a cupcake company. Yeah. And the lady, uh, her, I don't remember her name, but she was the brand of the cupcake business. Yeah. People knew her. People went to get her cupcakes because she was known in the community. If she says something controversial, she could see a serious loss in business because she's so personally connected to her brand. Yeah. So if you're like that, probably you are being a small business owner. Um, be real careful. I, I don't even know if I would get into those waters just for the sake of 
of protecting my brand identity. One last thing on this subject that I, I find intriguing. Let's say you are putting together a social media campaign mm -hmm. and you have a whole plan, you've been working on it for weeks, you're gonna roll it out, maybe it's multi-omni-channel, it's gonna be all kinds of things. And when you're planning on doing all this stuff and suddenly all the news is coming down about Donald Sterling and it's mm -hmm. Saturday night or you're getting ready to roll things out, how big of a story does it have to be that it's, you're going to push off and wait on launching something because you realize that news cycles are going to be inundated by something else? Yeah. And how do you judge that, especially on the social media Absolutely. side? Absolutely. Um, obviously, there's no one size fits all. You know, I'm not going to say something here that's going to be so profound and it's going to change everybody's life because every situation is different. Something like this that obviously is huge in California and huge on the West Coast and has really been huge across the United States. But I'm sure that that concentration of the news in California and L.A., uh, if you're an L.A. small business, definitely hold it off. Uh, if you're an East Coast small business and you're in a small town who maybe doesn't pay as much attention to the national news, you've kind of got a delicate balance there. I think, I think um, you're smart to um, delay it if you don't. Here, here, here's what I'm going to say. If you have a really good connection with your social community and you have a, a community who's hot for what you do, and they share and they're involved and they're engaged, forget whatever's going on in the news and just launch it because those people care about what you're doing. Right. Um, if you're struggling to find that connection and you're trying to find that traffic and trying to find that engagement, I'd give it some time because all, all, that's, all that's happening is people are going to be distracted from what you're trying to, to get yeah. in front of them. And here's, here's an example that was in my mind about this. When Donald Sterling, all this was happening in Los Angeles and Michael Jordan came out and made a statement negative about Donald Sterling and about the comics and what should happen. Mm. And everybody was shocked because Michael Jordan is known as being the brand of Michael Jordan. Yeah. And when you ask him to make something, a comment about anything social or anything that might, someone might disagree with him on, he rarely did. Yeah. And he jumped in on this and this was important to him. But that meant he, it was obviously going to you know, have some impact sure, on his brand. Absolutely. So I think sometimes you have to choose your shots as a brand mm -hmm. and you have to decide how active you're going to be. None of us are surprised when Apple and Google jump into a lot of social conversations. Yeah. All of us were shocked when Michael Jordan and Jordan Brand jumped into a social conversation. Mm -hmm. He didn't do it on social media. I, wouldn't we all love to have Michael Jordan on Seriously. Twitter? That would I rock. Know, Come on, I'm MJ, get you. out there. Get a <laughs> MJ23 verified. I would love to see that. It, it, to me, it was an interesting conversation because so much of what we do on social media is tied to what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. And so if everybody's out there spending time on Facebook and Twitter and talking about a subject that's different than us, we have to decide they only have a, a each person's only going to tweet a certain amount of times a day. And right. if they've already taken up 10 of them talking about this sub, other subject that's going on, that's a major subject and mm -hmm. a major story, uh, then I would probably be a little slower to jump sure. in and think about it. Just because what I realize, what I want to do through social media is get other people to talk about me. Yep. And they have a limited amount of time. They, they're talking about something else yeah. all this time. And what's interesting to me, stories like this, is it dominates the conversation for quite a while. Yeah. And uh, I, what I noticed today was there was a big event in the social media world and it didn't get a lot of press to me. Yeah. Um, the first time since 2010... Uh, Facebook comes out and does a developer conference, yeah. F8. They announced it several months ago. And April 30th, they're in, I think they're in Marin. I'm not sure where they are. Yeah. Somewhere in the Bay Area. Uh, big conference, lots of developers there. Mark Zuckerberg's doing the keynote. And I don't feel like there was a lot of buzz today. And yeah. I, I kind of wondered how much of that is hangover. Because what was getting buzz today was the um, detective from Who Framed Roger Rabbit dying. Yeah, yeah it was just interesting. Because yeah, yeah, Facebook... Have they lost a little strength? Did they not have something exciting to notice? Was this focused at people that weren't mainstream? So you and I even don't even yeah, get you know, excited I, I, about it. I think I think because it's the F eight conference and that's and that's Facebook's developer conference. Um, it's not geared towards you and I. It's not geared towards the small business owner. It's not really geared towards any business owner. It's geared towards people who can build apps and can develop on the Facebook platform. Yeah. I have no skills in that area. I know a lot of really talented people who do. Um, but for me, I'm a marketer, so I'm not going to pay a lot of attention to what's going on because the lead up to it has has been saying it's just going to be app development stuff. It's going to be cool for those people, but for just the average, you know, Joe Schmo, nobody nobody cares because yeah. we don't have those skills. So we might see some of the things as a result of this conference. We might see a lot of really new cool features that they rolled out today that that we might start to start to see integrated into our daily lives, but. Um, as far as creating buzz, it wasn't for us. Yeah. Now, 
Facebook is obviously going mobile, mm -hmm. and the majority of what they're focusing on today was mobile. And yep. total, I have not had a chance to watch the keynote. I was out of the office. It, w it was happening at uh, roughly 1 o'clock Eastern time, mm -hmm. 10 o'clock uh, West or Coast Pacific time, and I was not able to sit down and watch it. So all I've gotten at this point, and we're a couple hours removed from it, is a little bit of coverage that I was able to find. And what I was surprised was, when I was going to some of the major sites I usually go to, it wasn't grabbing the big headlines. Uh -huh. The first headline I saw was anonymous check-in or anonymous login. Yeah. And I was like, what in the world? How is that a big story? What what is anonymous login? Well, from what from what I understand, and I'm and I'm similar to you, I didn't have a chance to watch the keynote actually myself, but uh, from what I understand from some live tweeting that I was watching, basically when you go to various websites and you can log in with Facebook, um, you're gonna be able to do it anonymously, so you're not giving that app all of your personal information that's stored on Facebook uh, until you're ready. At some point you can change that. Once you've learned to trust the app, once you believe in what it does, then you can change those features. But it's going to, I think Facebook is trying to give people that sort of comfort to use the Facebook platform yeah. to log in without feeling like you're giving away all your information. And I have that fear sometimes. sometimes and in fact, a lot of times I log in because I, I have enough information and I, I don't have like crazy personal information on Facebook. They have enough information. They yeah. have pictures of my kids. They, there are certain things I don't want everyone to have access to. And when I see that Facebook connect or log in with Facebook, if, it's, if there's another option, I choose it. Mm -hmm. In this case, what they're saying with their new privacy settings is, uh, in fact, I'll read the quote. This is from a Recode article, but they're quoting Zuckerberg. It lets you try apps without fear. Yep. And so I like that. Yeah. And what they're saying, I think at this point, no matter what, they got a hold of your address, they got a hold of your real name, and in most cases they could post something on and you had a hard time. You could turn it so no one could see the posts, but you couldn't keep it so they couldn't post if they right. wanted that as part of their login. Yep. This allows you to be in control and the user to be in control. Um, we'll see how people use it, uh, but I, I think here's what I... Facebook is becoming less about what they, what you and I can share on it and more of what we can do on it, it seems to be. Yeah. Which is an interesting, uh, you know, conundrum for us as marketers because will this change how people use it? Will it change the data we can get from it? And how does that change the advertising, which was the next big announcement mm -hmm. because they have, uh, I want to make sure I get the name right, uh, the new Facebook audience network. The yeah. fan, as we like to You know what, you're going to have is. to tell me all about that because I know nothing about it. <laughs> well, let's hope that I can figure out something. No. So uh, luckily this guy know, was buzzed out. It's been going around for a little while. And basically what this is is what you see in Google Ads mm -hmm. um, where, where you're on a third-party site and Google is syndicating the ads and that cookie is making it so from site to site to site, that information is being carried by your Google network. Mm -hmm. And so you might see the same ad on four different sites because it's targeting what is on your computer and what they know about right. you. Facebook is saying we're going to do the same thing. You don't. You don't have to. You can advertise on the Facebook site. You can do. We we're used to them. You know whether it's the pictures on the side or the promoted Extreme, posts or yeah. yeah whatever those are. We're getting more and more used to that. But then we're also going to be able to see ads that are on, you know, banner ads on other sites mm -hmm. or across mobile apps, which is a big thing that are connected to the Facebook ad network. Mm -hmm. And so as they called it, the Facebook audience network. And so I'm still learning a little bit about this. Now, do you think that adds value to the small business who's looking to do advertising and looking for ways to you know, plug in and get to the demographic information of Facebook? Sure, absolutely. Um, Facebook has such a, really, I think, a very impressive ad network in the way that they can drill down to find target audience and specific audiences. And so if you can use that capability and that tool that they have across different platforms, it can only help, right? Yep. I mean, it can only help. Yeah. That's the only thing you can do. So yeah, that sounds super helpful. Sounds like it'd be really, really neat. Um, Is it better than Google? I mean, no. it, obviously we haven't seen it yet, right. but if Facebook can fully implement it, use all the information that they have, are they capable of producing a product that's better than Google and doing these type of ads? I think that they can uh, drill down to specific people and specific audiences better than Google. I don't know if they'll ever do quite as well as far as like cookie tracking as Google. That's yeah. my take on it. I visit TaylorMade Golf. I go to any other site. I see TaylorMade products everywhere, yeah. which is why Google is so powerful. If I'm part of a target market for, you know, a, a small diner and I visit them on Facebook and I like them on Facebook and all of a sudden I'm in an app and I see an ad for it. That could be really powerful. Yeah. I can absolutely see how it's going to be really powerful. I don't know 
if they'll be as good as Google because I'm betting that Google will adapt to that. Uh, let's choose one of your clients that you work for, uh, Nick's Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And let's say people go to their Facebook page and then and then they're you know, cruising around the internet and they're looking at uh, buying some clothes and then they're reading on CNN.com and they're cruising around and suddenly they see another ad for Nick's Kitchen because they like them on Facebook. Sure. What intrigues me about that is Google at this point doesn't have that likability. Hey, I like these. You know, you can you know circle up as we like yeah. to say <laughs> on a Google Plus page. However, they don't really do a lot with that information. Facebook. If you go to Nick's Kitchen all the time in Huntington, Indiana, mm -hmm. home of the home tenderloin, we love you, Jean Anne. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know that you like that place. And it might be yeah. a little bit of a reminder that, hey, and maybe just like the contextualized, hey, your friends like this. I don't know if they can yeah, do that. Yeah, and that's, they, they that's may where be really able to, powerful. They may be able to you know, get a little bit stronger. Now, will they do it better in Google? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but it gives us one more player. And here's what I hope. I hope it drives prices down because mm. when Facebook has the omnipresence across all the platforms, when they're on the mobile ads, when they're in yeah. the apps, just like Google already is, Apple's playing on the iOS side and doing all the ad things there. Plus you have Yahoo doing major stuff, mm -hmm. Yahoo connected with Bing. Yep. There's several platforms that you can do it. Plus, you know, a dozen that I'm yeah. not mentioning. Yeah, smaller ones. All this goes in and Facebook comes in. If they can be competitive and make everyone be competitive on price, they're all, they all want to make their money, but mm -hmm. it gets better for the small business because we can jump in and it doesn't just have to be the giant brand. So yeah. I think what Facebook does is you can spend $10 a day and make a difference sometimes for a small Absolutely. business on Facebook Absolutely. ads. You can't always do that on Google mm -hmm. and Google ads and Google sense and all the things that go across the board. Um, so if Facebook can get competitive at this and we can get some banner ads and you can get focus and you can make ads in apps. What I love about the idea is somebody creates an app and I can... You know, if they continually are using the Spotify app, yep. and Absolutely. I can use the little advertisements only when they're in this area code because we know geolocated where they are, mm -hmm. because the phone actually says, you're right here, and you're only three blocks away. There's some, there's some interesting ways that we can you know, play with this if the price can get down and we don't right. have to jump in at the $30,000 per impression mark. Yeah, and know? that's absolutely where Facebook has an advantage because they know so much information about us, what we like, where we are based on GPS. The people that we could are connected with, it's really powerful. It could be really cool. Yep. It could be really, really cool. Could be great. Uh, I, I think the general feel here is nothing revolutionary. There's a lot of new mm -hmm. app development. Facebook's been buying. Obviously, they are focused on mobile. Uh, the rumor was, and I haven't seen that yet, and I was just double checking because I don't like to say things live on the internet that may not be true, but the rumor was that there would be some new apps mobile that were Facebook apps like mm -hmm. the paper app, and I haven't seen that yet. Now, Facebook talks mobile pay payment product. That was the new thing that they're gonna launch in September. They're gonna allow mobile payments through them. This is certainly something, uh, we were, I was talking with Ethan, one of our content team. Yeah. Uh, mobile payments, everybody wants to get in on the game. Yes. Apple's wanting to get in on the game. Everybody's wanting to figure out how to do this. Um, full disclosure, that's part of what our com parent company, and mm -hmm. you know, we're certainly part of that. Yep. Everybody wants to be part of the payments and get that little percentage of that processing payment. And Facebook looks like they're gonna jump into the play. I don't know much about it. I think that makes a lot of sense if you're a big player like Facebook. And uh, I've heard rumors of e-commerce coming to yeah. Facebook really, really powerfully. Some companies already have developed apps and things to do that on Facebook. Why not, if you're Facebook, why not make that little percentage off of the processing and get involved in that world rather than having some third party do it? Right. So makes a lot of sense for them. I think uh, Facebook, are they dead? Oh, no. Facebook is so relevant and so you know, day to day, they just have so many users. And we'll talk about this here as we transition into Twitter. Yeah. Because what we're learning is, is Facebook has jumped out so far in the lead worldwide with having so many active users and people that are daily, weekly, monthly using it. Yeah. I love Twitter. We, we all know that that's my choice. I mm -hmm. follow it. I'm an in-stream user of Twitter. I, that's how I get all my news and interact. And I interact more and more and I kind of go, you know, feast or famine in that. Yeah. But you can count that if, uh, if you guys like Shark Tank, uh, you can count on Friday nights I, I, at Salcha on the Twitter. Yep. That's me, you know, with the 150 tweets showing up there. But uh, it's powerful. What we're interested in is is Twitter. Um, how, what's their relevance? Because all the investors got scared to death. They went to a record low. Yeah. Literally below their IPO on their price. Um, I think they rebounded a little bit today. Yeah. I haven't. I'm not watching it live right now, but. What, what do we think about that? Because investors are like, hey, you're not making any money yet. 
your ad revenue, even though they beat projections, which is mm -hmm. always about the, hey, beat the street, because they're, they see, their curve seems to be slowing down. Yeah. Um, what do you think? You know what? We've got this Business Insider article uh, that actually has a, has a graph on it somewhere. Um, but it's showing a really, really steep decline in new users. That, it makes sense for investors to be nervous. As a business, that looks scary. You know, that looks like, oh man, we're starting to starting to just lose everything that we're trying to work towards, but they also grew incredibly rapidly at the beginning. If I was if I was buying stocks right now, I wouldn't be afraid to invest in Twitter. This is not legal advice. <laughs> so I just I think that Twitter is obviously going to rebound. They're so powerful. They've got so many intelligent and and really uh, brilliant minds over there running it. They're not they're not just going to continue to sink. That stock price I think will go back up and they're going to develop and turn out some really cool stuff that's going to make those investors pretty happy. They obviously they fo fully played and jumped in and said, "Hey, TV's where we're going to oh, be yeah. at." And I think media, they're, you know, what they're doing with even movies and everything, the hashtags and how they're trying to connect themselves directly to your experience and being that second screen of what's yeah. going on and dominating that second screen. I certainly believe they're in there. They're becoming, I think what happened was, I would say marketers kind of ruined Twitter for a little mm. while there because suddenly we became so focused. That article that we talked about last week, or it was actually a slide share, where, you know, numbers became all, all about how many followers and likes you have. Yep. And that became the driving, you know, schematic of this is, shows our impact. Yep. And that doesn't really matter. In fact, Twitter was really easy to fake that. Mm -hmm. And you could go to a million sites and pay $5 and get 15,000 yeah, followers. Absolutely. And suddenly your numbers are skewed and your engagement is minimal. Right. And then your ROI at the end, whether it's sales or services or people that are going to your website or however you're trying to measure it, uh, you're not having that impact no. because you're you know, going to this large audience that no one's listening to you. Right. So I think what's gonna have to happen with Twitter is we're gonna have to come back and say, how do you really use it? Mm -hmm. And I think customer service is its number Absolutely. one goal. Yeah. I think the opportunity to really engage and answer questions in a short format, because what I love about Twitter is people can't BS me. Because right. they can't spend a lot of time, because you in 140 characters, or even if you use two to three tweets, you have to really get down to the core of the message. Yep. Because if you go beyond that, I'm not going to listen to you and you're out. Yeah, and, um, you've wasted my time. Right, and so unfollow or put you in a list that I'm not in because I don't want you to know I'm not following you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, that's my way now, you know. Uh, I have a lot of unpublished lists you don't know about. But here's what does this mean for a small business? As the ads continue to the new ad platform. In fact, we used one, or I used one this week and I introduced you to a new app. They have now in the mobile, in apps, or in app ads where you can download the app with one click basically. Yep. You know, I, and I saw Perch, which was a new app, which mm -hmm. I really I, intrigued at really and playing with yep. it. But I got it because it was an ad in the middle of my um, Twitter stream on my app on my phone that literally said, hey, download this, it's relevant for small business. Yeah. And that was great. And I downloaded it and I liked it. Because it's I, right down your alley. They've got it narrowed down. They've got it right to the correct people. Yeah. And so if they become more and more willing to, be, to help us find specific things and navigate to quick, interesting... This was an app download, which yeah. I was glad for. But what if they say, hey, you're close to this place. Yeah then it's really relevant for the small business, for the restaurant, for the retail place, to be able to you know, jump in stream and not annoy someone too much in 140 characters. That's what I love about it. Because Facebook, they, people have liked and shared so many things that Facebook chooses what you see and you have to pay big dollars to get in front of their eyes. And yep. then you're probably tuned out because so many people are paying to be in those eyes. Right. And that's not fully true. And there's, way, you know, there's some great ways to use Facebook mm -hmm. ads and we'll have future shows about how to write ads and things like that. Yeah. But... Twitter to me, I, I'm really high on it. Am I wrong? Uh, you know what? I don't. I don't think you're wrong at all. I think Twitter, obviously, is doing something right. Yeah. Um, investors might be a little shy away, but I think they're very clearly doing something right in that. Small example that you gave. You're an in-stream user. You use it for everything. So you're just going through your stream, and boom, there's an app that's relevant to you. Yep. How much more uh, relevant of a case study do you need? You know, yep. they are they are going down the right path. They're going down the right direction. And if they can start to use your mobile device's GPS in such a way to say, hey, you're close to Nick's Kitchen, again, another shout out to, to one of our clients down there in Huntington, Indiana. And I say, you know what, I am close there. I should stop in and get a, and get a sandwich. How That is so powerful. And then, like you said, it's more powerful than Facebook because in Facebook, yes, you can do that. But if, you are, if you're really geolocating it to 
Twitter power users, people who use and stream that way, you really can't lose. You now, know? let's throw this out here. Mm -hmm. What I've noticed with some of our clients who are very successful on Facebook is they struggle on Twitter. Why do you think that is? Have any ideas? Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with demographic. Okay. I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, with use case. I think um, one of our more powerful uh, Facebook pages uh, at, at Paper Media, one of the clients that we manage, uh, struggles mightily on Twitter. Uh, their demographic that they're going after, that they're trying to target, skews a lot older. They also struggle, I think, because of the use case in, of Twitter in general in our area, uh, because they, our area tends to also skew a little bit older, and I think we're getting a little bit more tech savvy, and we're starting to see more people use Twitter, and we're starting to, to see some of those things. But I think that the biggest reason that most small businesses, at least from what I can tell, um, struggle with is that they don't have a plan specifically for Twitter and specifically for Facebook. It's kind of a cross-platform. This worked on Facebook. It should work on Twitter, but it doesn't. Right. Uh, Twitter users look for very different things. Twitter users want something short, no BS, just give me the point. Give me something free. Give me whatever. And on Facebook, you have a little bit more time. You have a chance to capture somebody with an image a little bit longer, maybe. Yeah. Um, they're not scrolling through the feed as fast. So, um, yeah, you're going to see that going back and forth, but uh, I think the major key in fixing that is to make sure you have a specific strategy and plan for Twitter all by itself. Right. Here, and I wonder at this, is Facebook allows brands to be, become a little less, uh, a little more billboardish mm -hmm. and less of a person. So they're still more of a business. Twitter, if you want to use it well, you really, your brand has to become a person. You have oh, yeah. to be interactive. You have to have a conversation. You have to be Even smart. though you're doing, yeah, even though you're doing it at 140 characters or less, depending on how long you're tweeting and mentioning someone and how long their name is, mm -hmm. it, you have to actually be person to person, human to human. Yep. And we forget that when we get on Twitter and we try to act like we do on Facebook. Yeah. Hey, everyone, come get my sandwich today. And yeah. that's, you know, well, the problem is that doesn't work on Twitter. We're, we're going to have to rethink that a little bit. Now, don't, don't jump in when all these investors are saying the demise of Twitter is near. Yeah. The fact is there's money to be made. Yep. They're making maybe, you know, one of the things that's happening is they're saying, hey, look, per view, per user, they're making less money than they were quarter to quarter, even though their profits went up. And that's yeah. what made people scared. I think that's really just a correction of their system. Yeah. And I think what's going to happen is, if they're smart, and I, I believe they are, Absolutely. they're going to figure out how to monetize more and more because they have a, a conversation that no one else has that's mm -hmm. going on. And there are people that are such avid users of Twitter and get all their information from Twitter that brands just have to figure out how to do that, and they'll figure out how to sell that to the brands. Absolutely. And I think we'll see that more and more that's tastefully done. All right, so I'm going to take the tip that you were just talking about, being human to human, and actually yeah. transition it to Instagram because it's super powerful on Instagram too. That's exactly the sort of uh, a voice and foundation kind of that you have to create on Instagram. Now Instagram gives you the same sort of uh, capability that Facebook does being all visual, but if people see your picture and they're intrigued by your picture, they want to probably read that caption too. And you want to have that short, witty, quick, to the point, personal human kind of interaction, uh, human feel to your, to your, uh, your description of your picture. That's one of the one of the reasons why a lot of the people that I follow on Instagram uh, that, I, that I love to follow them so much. It's so much fun to follow a, a, local, a local pub here in town and you know, a, a place, Chevrolet even, for example. Yeah. It feels like a person took that picture, put, a, put their thoughts about it in the description, and that's it. Yeah. You're not trying to sell me anything. You're just saying, check this out. It's a beautiful sunset. That's it. Inspiration is so much about what mm -hmm. happens. And, you know, Instagram somewhat is, here's the world as the way I want to see it, not the way I actually see it. Yeah, and as brands, we have to realize, let's figure out a way to help people see it. And it doesn't all, you know, life isn't fully just about us. Mm -hmm. It's not fully just about, uh, you know, hey, it's, you know, about selling my product or selling my service and try to figure out ways to group around that. Now, mm -hmm. Instagram this week said, we're playing with ads that are not just pictures, which yep. we've seen. And I've seen very few. There have been very limited on that. Yeah. And I, I'm still, we have not used, a, done any ads on this Instagram. Yeah. And I, I don't even know if we could jump in. I haven't even inspected that. So we'll, yeah. we'll look into that. But I did read that they're going to allow videos or playing with. They have mm -hmm. are testing videos as ads. Yeah. Do you um, think that's a good thing? I don't see anything wrong with it if they keep the same kind of a feel that they've been going for uh, with, with just your still pictures. I mean, it's been so almost unnoticeable, so kind of like just going through your stream and it feels natural and it just is a part of the experience. I think videos would be the same way. Yeah. You and I post videos to Instagram, so 
what's the difference if someone else does? And if the brand does it well in 15 oh, yeah. seconds, and and I think what this means, we were saying this earlier in just a pre-discussion this morning when talking about this topic, it gives an opportunity for the small business who can't spend forty thousand dollars doing production of fifteen mm. seconds because that's what you know they're spending more than that probably. Yeah. Some of these giant brands, even when they're you know they have their six second buying yet it cost them forty grand. They think that's a steal because their thirty second cost them four million dollars. Right. So we now jump in and say, look, we can create something creative. We can do it on our phones or small mm -hmm. webcams and be able to do something that gets into the, into the message stream. And we can pay to elevate it or we can not. And that's what I, I think 15 sec, a 15 second Instagram ad done well could be really powerful. Absolutely. Because I still think those 15 second pre rolls on YouTube, on YouTube are some of the most powerful video. You know, it's so I think they're better than what you get. At, Trying to go TV. for the 30 seconds, especially yeah. over the 30 second ads on yeah. YouTube where you can skip it after five right. seconds. If you do that well and grab their attention and make people want to think about it, I, there are a lot of those ads that I've seen that have made me go over to their webpage or maybe find mm -hmm. something else out or or go watch the rest of, here, watch the rest of the story. I've, I've done that several mm -hmm. times. I think that could happen to Instagram. Absolutely. Really, really cool opportunity. Uh, hopefully Instagram will add some sort of a link feature some yeah. point in the future. Yeah, and have you noticed this? this is, and people are finally getting around this. This is a link is in my profile. That's the new thing. Interesting. And so you ch are constantly changing the link in your profile to the direct link of whatever you're trying to promote. Hmm. So that- I haven't seen that. You That's haven't seen that. So, so a business and a brand will go out and be promoting something specific. They'll get that URL, put it directly in their profile, and then they'll add that. Because you can you can add long descriptions and just simply say, link is in the profile. Even if you want to link to a YouTube video, I've seen a couple places do this. Huh. If you want to link to a YouTube video that's longer, just say, link is in the profile. So people are getting around it and smart. And I had I wished I had thought about that. It's but it's, very an smart, it's, a, it's a unique way to get to that and because it's still not linkable and yeah. you can't get out of it. Absolutely. But you can so, in the profile. So if you're using Instagram, take that to heart. That's a really excellent practical tip for you just to take with you and think about um, as you're thinking through your Instagram plan. That's actually really, really neat. I hadn't heard that strategy before and that's something I'm definitely going to put in the, uh, in the tool belt. Well, as we finish up this week, any other news before we go to our infographic of the week that you want to cover? You know what? I think we did a, a pretty nice job covering yeah. both Facebook and Twitter today. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Well, Instagram. It, it, really, this is all about a conversation. Each week, there's all kinds of different stuff. Um, in weeks to come, I want to even talk a little bit about omni-channel stuff that I think Yahoo is really doing really interestingly uh, with their new collaboration with Comscore. And that was a story that I think is pretty applicable to small business down the road. But we'll, we'll leave that for another time. But the Instagram, or excuse me, the Instagram, the infographic <laughs> yeah, of the, the week. Of Dustin the week. always brings us a great infographic, and this week it is from Social Media Today. Yeah, absolutely. It's from Social Media Today. Uh, Matthew Kobach, I think is how you pronounce this guy's name, who did it. Um, this is just about as hands-on, take it with you, and use it as soon as you're done watching this show as it gets. you got 10 Facebook rules that every business needs to know before posting to Facebook. As simple as that. Very simple infographic, very clean, very sharp, um, and, we'll, and we'll throw that up there for you. But there's just 10 tips. They're very simple tips and they're very practical tips that, uh, that I try to think about every day. Uh, but it's a great reminder, yeah. especially for small businesses trying to really maximize Facebook. So, like we usually do, I'm gonna pick three, and then you can pick three, and we'll just go that way. Um, I like number one, right off the bat, always keep it positive. There's so much damage that you can do if you get negative on Facebook. Um, especially if you're on a rant or if you're like airing out your dirty laundry on your business page. It's just, it can just be a mess. Yeah. So it's really, uh, Facebook and Twitter, like you said, is kind of like the world as we want to see it, more or less, kind of social media, I think, as a whole goes yeah. that way. And I think uh, keeping it positive is really powerful, something that can be really useful. And looking for light that is in darkness sometimes. Absolutely. So looking yeah. for a positive spin if you see something. And then even how you can help bring some light to it or some levity to it. Mm -hmm. I think really one of the things I notice on Facebook that people I think struggle with is developing a consistent tone. Yeah. And that's the number 10. It's the last one mentioned here in the circle when you're looking at the infographic. But a consistent tone simply means how you phrase things, what kind of things you post, what people expect from you. Because so much of this algorithm is people wanting to see what you do and clicking that like and making that comment and then they are going to see you again and not have to come find you. Because right. if they have to come find you, you're lost. Yep. And you're going to end up paying, and even at that, it's a still a struggle. Still we're still, lost. you know, we're still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Um, and Facebook's going to keep us jumping because they want our dollars, which is just fine. But if you keep a consistent tone, if people know what they're going to get, if you're always funny, then be funny. Yeah. If you're serious, 
whatever that tone is, be who you are, be your brand, whatever, if you're um, a sh clothing sales, you know, and you're doing young, be young about how yeah, you do absolutely. things. And, and if, if you don't know how to make that voice and that's who you're targeting, go ask people. Absolutely. Correct research. Get out of your, you know, store and go down to the local park and talk to people and listen to people and say, hey, how would you talk on Facebook? Or just, you know, spend time on Facebook and look at what other public, you know, messages are yeah. out there and what they're doing and how they're doing it. So I keep a consistent tone. I don't think people realize that, that they jump around and you're like, oh, this is obvious who, who Facebook yeah. is. Right. And, you know, hey, this was not the same person that Facebook this yesterday. You can tell a lot of times in brands. Absolutely. No, that's a great practical tip. I'm going to go ahead and do number five, thank and reward your fans. This is one of my favorites. Uh, we talked about, we had a whole show about thank you on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, saying thank you for people coming to your store. Uh, I have a friend who's a car salesman on Facebook. He's using it kind of as a personal slash business page. Every time someone buys a car from him, he takes their picture when they buy it and he shouts out and tags them and becomes their friend on Facebook and just says, hey, thank you so-and-so for coming out and buying your brand new 2013 Dodge Charger or whatever. It was great doing business with you. Uh, who's next? And that's all he says. And yeah. it's, it's a great way to say thank you, but I love the reward your fans part. Um, one of my big takes that I think is really, a thing, a thing that's really powerful on social networks is to be able to create that, that sense of exclusiveness, that, that, that I'm a part of an exclusive core group of people because I follow them on Facebook yeah. or, I follow, or I like them on Facebook or follow them on Twitter. Give something away. Give away a $5 gift card. Give away a $10 gift card. Give away a $50 gift card to Amazon. It doesn't even have to do with anything in your store, but just making people really feel like they're getting something special because they're connected to you yep. and, and they and they can they can get something special maybe they're your restaurant and you offer an off-menu food item nothing that can be found by anybody else except for someone who follows you on twitter or facebook for example yep. really really cool and and really powerful to create that exclusivity because that's when people get connected to your brand the strongest yeah and they become more and more champions when they mm -hmm. are excited about it's not just bribery, though sometimes that works, but it's just the fact that, hey, we value what you're doing and thanks for you know telling other people about us, so we're gonna reward you. I love watching when people jump in and do something totally random and out of you know the blue for people on their social media streams. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm gonna choose five people and I'm gonna send them money. I've seen people, you know brands yeah. do that, and so they just go through their stream. Find hey, send you know direct message me your address and we're gonna send you money today. Or we're gonna send you a free gift or uh, tell us you know what's your favorite product. Oh, by the way, now you get that product. Mm -hmm. You know uh, what I think enchanting your audience, enchanting your customers, enchanting your pre-customers sometimes means you have to give a little more. And, and we encourage you to have a social media budget and to spend oh, money absolutely. on social media. And sometimes some of that budget may not be buying ads, though that's important. And maybe you yeah. buy ads for a giveaway mm -hmm. or maybe you buy ads because you're going to do a giveaway. And the more information you collect on that giveaway, there's all kinds of ways you can do it. Absolutely. I'll, I'll choose another one. You should be posting five to 10 times per week. That means a, nearly once a day, yep. uh, certainly in, during your business week. You don't need to be posting a thousand times. So there's there all kinds of different strategies here. Mm -hmm. there, and I think you have to find the one that meets your tone. Yep. The, and the way that you're getting engagement. You just have to balance that and figure out whether you do five a week, mm -hmm. 10 a week, three a day, how do you space them out? Try things, if you're not getting engagement, try something else. If Absolutely. it's not working, don't just keep trying it. Absolutely. Don't so just keep doing that. A-B testing, we talk yeah. about that a lot. That's something you're a huge fan of, I know that for sure. Try things out and, and yep. make records of it. You know, I posted at three o'clock on Tuesday, that didn't work. I posted at five o'clock on Tuesday, all of a sudden I got 15 likes. Yep. Keep records of that kind of stuff. It's really important. I think we can stop at two apiece. We'll save the rest of them for them to read. Yeah, you guys can read it. There are lots of good things. In fact, you can tell us if there's one that we covered that you, you know, might want to cover. So tell us what you like. Yeah, That's absolutely. Let see. us know what you think. All right, all this, you can interact with us in so many different ways, yep. and that's what we really want. One, we would love it if you watch this live. So we're gonna keep doing that. Watch our Twitter, watch our Facebook. Uh, we'll, you know, we're doing this through Google Hangouts. We may even eventually say, hey, come join us on a Google Hangout. We're, yep. we're that interact, interested in you coming and interacting with us, whether it's telling us what you want us to talk about, commenting on what we say, telling us when we're wrong, giving us new ideas, whatever those things are, yeah. let's make this a conversation. Let's get better at social media. Absolutely. small businesses. 
You can interact with me personally at, at NK Manahan. You can interact with Dustin. Yep, at Dustin Hickel, also Google Plus, Dustin Hickel, let's circle up. And you can interact with Salcha at any of the platforms of at Salcha. And we would love for you to engage with us, have fun. Let's, uh, you know, if you watch Shark Tank, come on on Friday nights. Yeah. We have a lifeline. It's a two hour <laughs> episode. I don't, I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to watch both hours live, but I'll be definitely tweeting about it. And, and you know what? If you're on the West Coast, I actually stay up. I'm from the East Coast time, and I stay up, and from, you know, 11 o'clock to about 2 a.m. on the Eastern Time. I'm still tweeting about that's, Shark Tank. That's how much we want to hang out with you. So yeah. interact with us. Let's let's keep moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for all that you do. Thanks for watching, and we hope you watch us next time on Informe, a social media conversation.